Uh, hey everyone, Crispy from Crispy Stuff here today, and um, I'm showing my progress so far on the electric forge. So um, right now I have the base plate portion of the frame. It's turned out really well so far. So I plan to use the fire bricks that I have up there, cut the size, and uh, nichrome heating wire, which is scattered around the workshop. And uh, yeah, so the, the base plate here consists of some aluminum angle extrusions. Uh, I bent it to make corners as you can see and um, the way I bent it was by cutting out a chunk uh, and then just clamping it in the bench vise and then um, just pulling it until it was bent to roughly a right angle and that worked pretty well. Um, I had a bit of a problem with length here, so I had to add an extra one of these. But to hold the whole thing together, I've been using these little brackets that I've made by uh, essentially drilling holes into some shorter sections of the aluminum angle. And like to hold it all together properly, I'm using uh, these 4x15 millimeter bolts. I got them off eBay for like a few dollars for like 50. So that's worked really well, and instead of using a uh, nut on the other side, I'm uh, using a thread tap, which I also got off of eBay for a couple dollars, and just drilling and tapping all the holes. The base plate here is a piece of sheet metal cut out of one of the many pieces of sheet metal from microwaves and things uh, that I have sitting out there. So I just cut it to shape with a pair of a uh, tin snips which was a bit challenging but I only cut myself like once so and then I need to make um four pieces that come up in each of the corners to uh hold the actual thing so those will be corner pieces and uh that should hold the bricks in place all right guys um after spending literal days on it I have finally finished the frame for the uh forge the new furnace so um it is solid aluminum with a uh, steel base plate, just a steel sheet. Uh, so everything has been bolted together with uh, three millimeter bolts and all the holes have been tapped. So everything has been uh, bolted and tapped together. Um, it's got a base plate which is big enough to accommodate the floor and then um, it's got these arms which will hold the the arms which will hold the bricks going across like that. So um, next step is to start assembling the bricks into the frame and then to begin working on manufacturing the heating elements from nichrome wire. Alright, I've installed the uh, base which is insulating fire brick uh, which is what everything is going to be made out of but uh, this is where I had to do the most cutting. I cut the bricks up so they fit in here to make a square of the set dimensions allow me to do this have one brick like that and then have another like that and stack that pattern all the way around so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay um, the first layer is going in so as you can see the bricks stack very nicely like that so uh, I had got all my dimensions and all my cuts right there's a few gaps here and there on these bits but um I'm thinking once it's done I might put some cross struts on this bit that can tension them together and ensure everything fits snugly but it's probably not going to be necessary to be honest everything's pretty tight in there already so I'm going to go ahead and put on the next layer okay so I've got all the bricks in place so all these are insulating fire bricks there's the base and then the two layers of bricks crucible will sit in here then there'll be a lid on top there the heating elements will go along here. Now I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. You can see some lines on there from tracing out possible designs. But um, I'm going to think about that and see if I can come up with something. And if I do, I'll be back. Alright, um, another update. So I built a little lid for the forge. Um, it's not perfectly airtight. You can see through under there. but. That's okay, because we want the air to be able to escape. Although we don't want too much, which is the point of the lid. Um, so now I'm on to winding the heating element coils. So I've wound this quite long coil. Um, 
I did it using the drill actually. Uh, using the drill made it a lot easier. Uh, you just turn the drill on going very slowly and then slowly fed the wire on. But um, So my plan for this is to have around 2400-2500 watts. So that means uh, Australia 240 mains uh, I need about 10 amps flowing through and that corresponds to a temperature of about 800, 850 degrees which is perfect for melting aluminum which is what I'll be doing with this primarily so um, 10 amps is about the sweet spot and for 10 amps from 240 mains we need uh, about 24 ohms of resistance in the wire so if I pull the coil out to separate all the little gaps and you, you look on the multimeter that's connected to either end I have 23.8 ohms which is just under 24 but that's close enough so um yeah the heating elements done I just need to figure out how I'm gonna position it inside the container okay uh, I have wired up all the heating elements or the coils into the uh, forge so it should all be ready to go essentially once I wire it up so inside um, I put in these nails and the nails went in um, in six places there were two nails so here and here and each of these are 2.5 centimeters that's a 2.5 centimeter gap so from the edge of the box and it's the uh, mirrored on this side same and here this one goes at 7.5 so smack in the middle smack bang in the middle um, there and there and that gives us six of these coils and each of these coils is suspended between two of these nails and uh, this is how the heating wires are arranged and as you can see it's all connected one big long element so here is where we'll hook up the power uh, so we'll just hook up one line of the mains to here and one to here it doesn't really matter which so um, once I wire up a system for that but this will all be exposed mains which means I'll want to turn it off before I go anywhere near it to do anything alright so I thought I'd show you how the crucible sits in there so uh, this is a graphite crucible which is alright for this and um, I have a little piece of one of the bricks off cuts down there just to raise it a little bit and um, uh, another thing I forgot to show in the last one is the resistance of all these coils so they're hooked up to my multimeter and as you can see 23.8, 23.9, 23.7 is what it's been saying so I'm saying around 23.8 ohms which is pretty damn close to 24 so I am definitely happy with uh, how everything is turned out with this so far so now I just need to figure out how exactly I'm hooking it up to mains and give it a dry run